So now we're playing musical chairs with friendships. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is my review for Love and Hip Hop Hollywood Season 4, Episode 8. Um, musical chairs. That's what they're playing. Now these people are friends. Now these people are friends. That, whatever. Just keep on listening and we're going to talk about it. So, we start right off. Lyrica needs to go to a stylist. Because she's getting ready to do a listening party for her. Uh, her album is finally done. And when you know who walks in together, Zale and Alexis Sky. So now they're friends. Really? Stop playing. Anyway, the two of them come in there. Uh, she's like, wait a minute. Last time I've seen y'all, y'all was throwing stuff at each other. Karen, oh, no, we're good. We're good. And, you know, um, I got to get my money. You know, this stuff thing, any other blah, 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 blah. Bull. Bull. But anyway, so she goes on about how when she tried to be friends with both groups, it just didn't work for her. And she hopes that it's working for Zell. And he's like, well, it can. You know, I'm cool. I'm be cool with them. Cool. You're shady. You're not cool with anybody. You're wherever you need to be to get on camera. It is what it is. Then uh, there was a, a fight between Monice and Alexis Sky, they supposedly got into it. This was something that didn't get caught on camera. Um, after the Instagram post, Monice said, that's it, I'm going to whoop her ass. And she did. She went and caught her at a, a situation and she jumped on her. Now, you all tell me what y'all got out of, out of that conversation. From the conversation, I got that Monice was kind of whooping Alexis up. And somebody else jumped in, and Monice ended up stretched out on the ground, is kind of what Monice was saying. And I'm like, so are you saying you got jumped? And Alexis is saying that she what Monice is asked. But Zell said to her, well, girl, I got to tell you, I did hear that you got whooped up, Patty. I said, oh, see, you being shy. <laughs> But what I could gather, it sounded like Monice went up there and laid hands on Miss Alexis because she snatched her wig off and everything. It sounded like somebody else intervened and Monice ended up on the ground. Now, that's what I got. Y'all tell me in the comments what it is that y'all got out of that conversation. Moving on. Next, we see Booby and Brooke. We all know what's going on with Booby and Brooke. And they had this whole little conversation. She went up to his apartment. See lipstick on the glass and the hat was feeling some kind of way. What you feeling some kind of way for, Brooke? You ain't your man. You, you're contradicting yourself. You're in your confessional saying, oh, you know the respect I have for Keisha, blah, 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 blah. But in the next breath, you're saying, you know, he looking good to me. So which is it? Because it can't be both. So which is it? Are you loyal to Keisha and not going to screw her baby's daddy? Or are you ready to bust it open for Booby. And I think that you're ready to bust it open for Booby. And Booby basically went on out there with the, I want you, honey. I said in a minute, he, he went from singing that little song that he got together with her, get ready to start singing Luke James, I want you, honey. I said, well, whatever. So, and then she says, oh, well, I'm going to take you as my plus one to Lyrica's listening party. So, Brooke, what you need to do, and she's just gorgeous. I think she's so cute, so talented. But, girl, you need to stop playing these games. Stop being in the confessional and making yourself look foolish because it's not even a backpedal of the pussy popping type of situation. It's just literally lying. You're just lying about what you're doing. You're going to screw 
Keisha's baby's daddy, and that's all that's to it. But I can't wait. I'm still waiting, and I guess maybe I'm about to wait all the way to the reunion to see what Keisha has to say. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Next, we see Tierra and Nikki have a conversation, sit down, have a conversation. She's telling her, you know what, what is going on with you and Hazel E? And Tierra says, you know, me and Hazel always had an agreement, even if we did fall out, that we would never get physical with each other. Last time I see her, bitch threw a plate of food on me. I mean, it is what it is. And I'm like, okay, I understand that. And, you know, again, we've said that Hazel, the way Hazel's acting is just, she's horrible. She needs somebody to take and rat-a-tat-tat on that ass. She really do. She needs somebody to take her and bang her against a brick wall a couple times and get her right together. Um, then Nikki was saying, you, and this whole thing, word on the street is that you're a drunk bitch, you know, basically. And you don't get, um, Nikki's very judgmental. Did y'all notice that? Very judgmental. When it comes to Tierra, she's looking at Tierra like this. Mm. Are you doing okay? Are you sure? I'm like, she's as condescending, child. I've been to cuss her out. I so I've never liked her. From the, I just don't. There's something about Nikki that just doesn't sit right with me. I just do not care for her. But anyway, moving on. So let's go to Lyrica's listening party. Ciao. I done told y'all before that Zell Swag is a clown, a clown. So this was his idea of dressing and styling Lyrica. A t-shirt tied up and knotted in the back. And a pair of red latex pants. Girl, you threw some money out there for a stylist for that? Listen, Miss Lyrica, honey, hit me up on IG, girl. I'll put you something together. Because, bitch, he ain't did nothing but took your money. All he did was took your money. Red latex pants and a t-shirt? Honey, your husband is styled out more than him. Honey, because your husband gives you beads and baubles and things. Honey, who's putting her together, honey? <laughs> That's who you need to call. And I think he's doing it himself, honey. I swear he got a little under underground deal with Claire's boutique, honey. <laughs> All that mess he be wearing. Anyway, but I just was like, this is what you're putting on for your party? Mess. Absolute mess. Anyway, um here then I was like, wait a minute, A1. Brooke and Booby show up. And A1 and Lyrica's giving, well, where's Maurice, honey? Or Marcus, rather. Where's Marcus? And they just wasn't letting it go. Cause, and A1 act like he was just so offended. Talking about, what's your name? Boo Boo. Oh, Booby. He gonna say, oh, then he said something about, you supposed to be with the king and you with the young prince. I was like, I'm gonna say A1, you might want to simmer down. You might want to simmer down. You act like you got too much invested in Marcus. Honey, mind your business. Mind your business and worry about the red devil that you're married to. Sit, sit down. Anyway, and Booby was like, let me go get some drinks. So I was like, yeah, Booby, go ahead. Then Hazel Lee adds her little piece in. Here we thought a child Hazel that had Booby. I said, oh, Booby. Booby, what is you doing with Hazel? Seriously? Just slumming. And she just, and that was the thing. Nobody was talking to Hazel. Nobody was paying Hazel any attention. You just felt the need. See, these are the types of people that you don't need to sleep with in any capacity. Don't let them get on their knees in front of you. Don't blow kisses out. Don't do anything with them. Don't let them be sliding in your DMs and getting away with it. People like that, just because there was nothing to benefit from letting people know that she had did anything with Booby, whatever it was. And she just wanted to tell it. Who needs that? Who needs that? And Hazel Lee is really not somebody that people are running around giving, yeah, I had her. No, not Hazel, honey. No, God. Anyway, I was like, a mess. A mess. And then she and she had that little attitude because she actually, she has worked for Brooke before as a stylist. And she was like trying to slide, talk stuff on Brooke. And I'm like, you hating, which is what you do best. She that, that that's truly. I don't know how, how fierce she is as a stylist or a PR person, but I know you a good hating bitch. I know that. <laughs> uh, oh Hazel, you're on my nerves this season. Um, next we got that Mr. Ray showed up, Alexis Sky and Nia, and um, and Monique. 
And then there was this whole little thing, you know, where they start to hash out because with all the fighting and everything that went on with Moniz and Alexis Sky, uh, Mr. Raiden jumped into it with himself and is attacking Alexis Sky on Instagram. Listen, why are you bothering that woman? Go somewhere and sit down. Go sit down. Go get you some business. Get your man to stop calling Zell trying to give him blurpage. You work on that. I didn't even understand it. I didn't understand why he even got in that. Like, Again, if you figure out what your man's doing with his mouth, you will have no time for Alexis and what she's doing with her wigs, okay? Sit down somewhere. Ridiculous. Lyrica ended up saying what she had to say and then told Moni she will say, you talking about you was going to whoop my ass, so what? What now? What now? And Moniece was giving, you know how she gives that. Oh, whatever, child. Whatever. Lyrica, whatever. She didn't even like go into it like Lyrica, you don't want it, honey. You don't want it with me. And I'm like, I don't know, Monice. I the two of them, Lyrica and Monice, I don't know if that would turn out too pretty. I see a lot of scratches, scrapes, and a lot of hair all over the place. Uh, mm -hmm. Anyway, but Lyrica ended up putting them all out. That was a mess. I mess. Um, next, the, listen, real fast, we're going to cover this because I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on them because they're boring to me. Princess and Ray, they went to a shaman. Ray was real disrespectful, wasn't feeling the shaman at all, called the woman a witch. Because, <laughs> of course, you know he has a Christian background, but he called that bitch a witch, honey. And, she, and he didn't agree with her because she said that she felt like Ray didn't want no baby and wasn't ready for no baby. And he wanted to prove her wrong. So later in the episode, he done went and borrowed. Borrowed like it was a baby alive. Borrowed somebody's little white baby daughter, honey. I said, oh, my God. Who? What fool gave their baby to Ray J and Princess? And Ray J. Child, the baby's tall as Ray J. They gave her to. She's a cute little thing. Little steer name is Stevie. It's Stevie something. It's a girl name and a boy name together. It's cute. And I said, look at her with herself. Hey, with her big old bright eyes, honey. And she's looking. And you could tell she she kind of knew Ray J a little bit. Because I think she actually belongs to one of his managers or one of his partners. But I'm like, child, I, I said, Mona, you're really trying it. Because we know that these white folks ain't gave this boy their baby. And it's a girl. That they ain't did that. They ain't did that. And I mean, I know you become. Well, and I'm gonna tell this real quick story, real fast. Um, it really is beautiful when people don't see color, and it's really not about a color thing. But we're talking about Ray J. Period. I wouldn't give Ray J. my dog to have for an hour. I, I just wouldn't do it. You wouldn't babysit. But when I opened up my own daycare, when I opened my daycare, this is way back when my kids were babies. I, I actually ran a daycare. I think I've told y'all that before, but when I opened my daycare, I had it just set in my mind that I was a male that was open in a daycare. Also, um, I just I just felt like right away that no matter who I was, that I would never have um, I didn't think I would have a lot of girl clients, and I didn't think I would have a lot of Caucasian clients. Well, for the record, my very first client was a little Caucasian girl with hair down to her waist and big, beautiful blue eyes, and she was just perfect, and she was the very first client, and she had, you know, her family had no issue about anything, and actually, you know, everything was fine, so it's not always about color. And I don't. I don't live in color, but you know, people do. And it is. it was strange to see out of nowhere this little white baby with Ray J. I'm just like, child, no. And, it's, and I say that because it was more so Ray J's re reputation than his skin color. So just so y'all know that, child. But anyway, so anyway, um, yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have given Ray J my white baby, my black baby, my brown dog, nothing. 
and, and Prince asked, because the two of them, they was both trying to do, change the baby's pamper, child. You neither one of them know what they was doing, child. That baby was crawling all over the counter and trying to get the hell away from them. I said, Lord have mercy. This is just ridiculous. Anyway, moving on from that, their whole storyline is really on my nerves. And he said he went back to the thing and he got his sperm counts up. So, y'all go knock her up and we'll see y'all next season because y'all are really wasting camera time. Anyway, moving on. So, Nikki is having this cosmetic launch. She sat down and was talking to Tier um, earlier. Tier did actually come. Um, Tier was supposed to be so open to talking to uh, Hazel and all this, but did you all notice when they went to start talking, Tier already had her shoes off? She was standing flat foot on the floor, baby, as soon as they started talking, and then they just started. I was like, oh, that is a mess. That is a mess. And Tier was already drinking when she got there. And again, Nikki started talking down to her. Um, it got on my nerves. It really did. Tier was very respectful to Nikki's mother. You know, when Nikki's mother was trying to calm her down and stuff, she's very respectful when it came to Nikki's mother. But where I got very irritated is that Hazel was being very vindictive. Hazel was really stroking the bear and picking. And Nikki was acting like she didn't notice and kept trying to put all the blame on Tierra. And I know y'all seen it. And I was like, I know why Tierra's all frustrated and furious. Been there, done that. They played, they were literally shifting the blame and Hazel was steadily living in it. She's living in it. And did y'all see her hair? Who did that? Or basically, who didn't do it? It was a mess. There was, she's supposed to be wearing it natural. There were straight pieces and it looked, she looked ridiculous. Read it with her old square. Why her butt look like that? Her butt looked like she had two boxes, two brand new pairs of shoes in a bag tied around her waist. Old lopsided square ass starting trouble. I, I just, I, she got on my nerves real bad and Nikki was getting on my nerves real, real bad with that whole thing. That vindictive behavior and them acting like they didn't see it and trying to place all the blame back on Tier. I didn't like that. And though she was a drunk bitch and trying to get even drunker. I'm like, Can I give me a shot? I said, you don't need no shot. Drunk ass. Anyway, moving on. Nikki sat with Moniece and they made up. Shift into the friendships. They made up and then they said, they're going to try again with Tier. I said, okay, whatever. Then AD sat with Tierra and told her, you know what, well, I'm going to give this uh, surprise party for Monique. I want you to, to come to the house and uh, it's going to be good. Everything's going to be fine. So, you know, she went on a schmoozed it over. So she would come and I said, oh boy, because where it cut out at is that she gets to the party and it's not a party. It's an intervention. I said, all oh, Tierra's going to be pissed. And that's where the show went off. So I was like, oh, that was sneaky. I was like, that was real sneaky. So, uh, uh. And I, and I kind of laughed because they try to build this good light with AD, but AD is messy. That pull dagger is messy too. Messy as she can be. But anyway, we'll talk about it next week. All right, y'all. Peace.